No human being has ever run more sub 10 100 meters than my guest today. And guess what? He didn't even like track and field growing up. So where did that inspiration come from? How did he do it? And with so much expectation and sometimes criticism, how does he stay focused? And what, if anything, does he regret? Asafa Powell is my guest this evening. I am Archibald Gordon, and this is Profile. Asafa Paul, welcome to Profile. Yeah, man, thanks for having me. I spend a lot of time nowadays watching videos of you and not so much videos that were track and feed videos, but mm -hmm. videos now of you on a YouTube channel. And that kind of fascinates me because we spent a lot of time seeing you as an athlete, but now we're seeing a different type, a different kind of you, mm -hmm. different part of you. And people generally think you are an intensely private man. Is that how you see yourself? Yeah, man, definitely. Uh, I see myself as a very private person. But, you know, thanks to COVID, you know, it bring out a different side of me. And my wife, you know, brought out a different side, side of me. How much of that goes back to your upbringing, being this very private person? You're the, what we call a wash belly, mm -hmm. the last of six brothers, six boys, yeah. raised by two <laughs> pastors. Yeah. Your life early on was church. Yeah, it was, it was church, you know, and um, my parents always used to, used to say, you know, don't, don't let people know your business, you know, um, to not talk people business and all that stuff. But yeah, I grew up in the church. Um, You're going all the time? All, all my life, all my life. I, I feel like I go to church. I used to go to church um, Sunday to Sunday. Yeah, but um, in real life, it was Sunday, Monday, and Wednesday. You know, so three days, um, not all three days were, you know, church service, you know, some was just like youth meeting and, you know, choir practice and all that stuff. So you grew up in this sort of very small community, Waterloo Road mm -hmm. in Linstead, St. Catherine, very close knit. Everyone knew your family because, of course, your parents were mm -hmm. involved in the church. And you move from there to starting to going to um, primary school and then to high school. Where was the point at which you started to say, you know, maybe I have a future in track and field? Well, you know, um, the household that I grew up in, six boys, you know, I make six, you know, and um, all my brothers used to do sports. My eldest brother, Donovan, he, he, he was the most successful. He, you know, went to the Olympic Games and he represented Jamaica. And he was big in boys' champs. I think one of the biggest boys' champs that, you know, ever happened here in Jamaica. Um, so me being the last one, I used to look up to him. You know, um, I don't know if it's because he was always in foreign and I always <laughs> wanted to go to foreign, <laughs> you know. But I always looked up to him. Went to primary school, Yorton Primary School. And um, I used to compete at sports day, sports day, and um, then I passed my exam, went to Charlemont High School. And the minute I went to Charlemont High School, you know, everyone knew me as, as Powell brother, meaning Donovan, Donovan's brother. You know, so I was a bit popular when, you know, the minute <laughs> I stepped into high school. Yeah, and, um, but your love was football, yeah, not but, at all, not yeah, track and field. I mean, football, I think everybody, most, most of Jamaica was football and cricket, pretty much, you know, so the easiest thing was to do was to think about football, you know, and um, I, my PE teacher, 
um, at the school, um, physical ed education teacher at the school, Miss Enid Fraser. Um, she was the one who looked at me and, you know, she asked me if I don't want to follow in my brother's footsteps, you know, I have the potential to be good at, at track and field, so why not? And you were like, what? No. No, 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 I, no. I mean, the thing is, um, this was somebody who I listened to. I had a lot of respect for her, so her opinion really, um, really, it really count, you know. I, I um, after I graduated, I went back to, she brought me back to school, pretty mm -hmm. much, to, to do track and field. So, um, whatever she said to do, I was, I was going to do that. And this so, is where she actually also started to assist you to go to J.C. Foster College. Yeah, she, she told me, then, she then told me to go to, G, try and go to J.C. Foster College in some evenings to, to work out. So, um, she would give me a bus fare. Some days my dad would give me a bus fare and uh, go to J.C. Foster maybe two or three days out of the week after school. And um, I didn't know anybody there. Um, I had no idea what I was going to do. So I saw the guys running and I just started to do whatever they were doing. So let me get this right. You were just going there as a, essentially like a stranger, mm -hmm. just going to practice? Yeah, man. Nobody's, no one said to you, you know, my youth, what you do? Actually, when um, I saw the guys running, I think they were running 150s. And I... I ran one of the 150s with them, and they were like, who are you? <laughs> um, how old are you? And I told them I was you know, 17, whatever. And they, they were like, all right, come. You, know, can, you can continue training with us. And then I was running. I keep on running with them, and they, I think it kind of shot them that they couldn't really beat me you know, um, over, over the 150. So they were like, yo, whenever you go to champs, just tell them that we coach you. <laughs> All right, so that, that, was, that was it. That was my training. My brother, Nigel, used to take me some weekends because he was um, studying um, at that time. So on, on the weekends, he used to take me to the, the track to do, you know, some, some workouts. So he was, he was one of my biggest supporters as well. And that led to this sort of big um, transition into the high school level. You, yeah. did, you did well at champs, mm -hmm. but not necessarily the kind of star athlete that people would have expected. Well, well, yeah, definitely, because firstly, Charlie Mount wasn't big into track and field. You know, that year when I went to champs, I was, we went in Mrs. Fraser's car. You know, it was just, I was the only athlete at champs from Charlie Mount. The only athlete, the I just only want athlete. to repeat that. <laughs> <laughs> the only athlete, and my brother and Mrs. Fraser brought me to, mm -hmm. to champs. And um, the minute I touched the track, you know, um, I opened everybody's eyes. I was in the newspaper the next day, you know, um, the new kid on the block. And my, my brother still keep all those newspapers up until this day. You're talking about Nigel right Nigel, there. yes. So how did Asafa Powell move from that person into the star that we now know him as? That's what we're going to be talking <laughs> about in the next segment of Profile. We're going to be talking about that transition to MVP. And it wasn't the kind of club that people were expecting or know of right now. Mm -hmm. So stick around with us on Profile as we continue this discussion with Asafa Powell. Oh, 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 oh,